Welcome back to coverage here. It is time for Sunday Night Magic here from GP Santa Clara. Marshall Sutcliffe, I'm in the booth with Eduardo Sajgalic, and we are ready for the finals. William Ho, John Martin, Jeremy Fry. They are sitting down against Logan Nettles, Vidianto Wajaya, and Jonathan Angulescu. They are ready to go. We're going to kick things off here with Legacy. We know what you want to see. <laughs> and uh, we've got Jonathan versus Jeremy. The matchup, Grixis Delver on the left-hand side of your screen against Jonathan, who is playing Sneak and Show. We just had a brief chat about it, but I want you to recap for us here, Eduardo. What do we expect to see from these two decks? So here I would expect Jeremy to try to get a quick fret underway, uh, something like a Deathrite Shaman that you see here or a Delver of Secrets. Um, develop qu frets quickly and then just keep up the strap for, for whatever Jonathan does. Um, I think one of the most interesting highlights I've seen into this matchup was an article by Owen Turdenwald explaining that the way that these Grixes uh, Delver decks can, or Delver decks in general, can beat the Sneak and Show decks is to avoid Soul Lands. So City of Traders and Ancient Tomb are really powerful for Jonathan because not only do they allow him to accelerate into Show and Tell, they allow him to accelerate out of Days and Spell Pierce range. So basically, these lands allow uh, Jeremy's class of cards to be limited to Force of Will. And basically, the more soul lands that Jonathan can get, the better, while Jeremy is just trying to put as much pressure as quickly as possible. You'll see this is pretty typical in the early stages here as Jonathan Angelescu starts trying to craft that hand, right? We've mm -hmm. got the Ponder on turn one. This is not uncommon. And, uh, you know, they generally don't try to just go all in and go for it in the first uh, turn or two, although the deck is technically capable of doing so. Uh, they'll usually try to set up, especially Jonathan, who really seems comfortable with this deck. I, I mm. feel like he, he's, you, you get the feeling that he's done this a lot of times before. For sure. Um, now, something that's going to put the edge to Jeremy Fry here, though, is I've just looked at the standings. So because third seed is over fourth, they get the choice of play draw. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan did not make a second land drop. I believe that what Jonathan did, because his island wasn't tapped, that's how I missed it the first time, was he probably scryed, kept top, decided not to ponder to, you know, ensure that the card is drawn, and then pondered later to try to maximize his chances of getting and a land. Whiffed? Yep. Oh, boy. Double death right, Shaman. This better be a land here. Okay, well, he's got a handful of Force of Wills, it looks like. Now, there's a Lotus Petal. Is that just so he doesn't have to discard, right? Um, he might have had that Lotus Petal earlier. It's quite possible. Well, and I'm just saying that he, yeah. may, he may be up to eight cards now. For sure, but he may have decided not to play the Lotus Petal because he didn't want to run it into a daze. And this way, he's, he's okay. That, that's why he would have waited a turn on it. Okay. Um, it, it's true that he could have also drawn it. That's totally fair. Uh, but there was no need to jam the Lotus Petal right now. Um, Jeremy Fry only plays one Spell Pierce, and the other counters, Daze and Force of Well, are basically free. So you're, I mean, is, you're, is there an upside to playing the, the Lotus Petal earlier anyway? Don't you just normally hold it? Um, while you would. Um, if you don't want to, when you're short landed, like, you know, like he only has one island. Like, yeah. It, Jeremy Fry saw that he missed a land, like, he's not, he didn't do his land up before playing Lotus Petal, which would be weird because you might as well play it to avoid a daze. Sure. So it's really weird that Jonathan would not do it. So mm -hmm. he would know that Jonathan doesn't have the land and would counter this pedal. Sure. Well, there we go. True name nemesis. Clock acquired here for Jeremy Fry. He's also jamming for two damage the good old fashioned way here. Jonathan has some time, but not a lot. It's going to go very quickly from here. Oh, but there's a land. And there's show and tell. Oh, but force of will. Can he protect it? Um, we we saw know he has one. Yeah, it depends if he has another blue card. But that would be why Jonathan kept this hand. Uh, the potential for this force of uh, the show and tell with force of will back up. He discards, uh, or excuse me, exiles a fluster storm. That resolves. What do they have? <laughs> Emrakul versus Wasteland. I know which side of the equation I like there. Is it, Does is Jeremy have anything that he can do against the impending doom of Emrakul? Jonathan basically made an Emrakul for free mana, and it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man, I love it when my opponent gets a land and I get an Emrakul. That, that sounds great. is good transaction. <laughs> I'll, I'll and like you said, though, th this does yeah. tell the story here, Eduardo, of why he kept the hand. He had all the pieces he needed, maybe even a way to protect it, just needed that mana source. Right, and you can see it here. He had double, he had another force of will. <laughs> wow, double force of will backup. That has to make it impossible here for Jeremy Fry to get out of this. Now, he does have seven permanents, make it eight. Still not enough, though, right? He's at 16 life. 
Right, and attacking into now 12, the true name nemesis isn't quite going to get there. No, I mean, we know how powerful that card is, but it does not kill you that quickly. Right, so like the two death right shamans would put Jonathan to 8, the true name nemesis to 5. Technically, Jeremy Fry, if he had two lightning bolts, would get there, but... Boom, Annihilator, 6 on the stack. Jeremy's going to uh, exile some stuff and try to knock Jonathan's life total down, but he's going to be left with just one permanent. Yeah. Looks like two. <laughs> Take it. I love that hand motion. The hand motion was one. great there. That was the come at me, bro hand motion. Well, he does look like he wants to try to draw something specific, but it's not going to mm -hmm. do it. Jonathan Angeleski wins a game one of his match. Ooh. Yeah. Miss a land drop on turn two. <laughs> Emra cool the next turn, no problem. It's all good, all good. All right, now let's take a look at game one here, Vidianto Wajai versus John Martin. We talked about this one. This is blue-white control in modern for Vidianto. On the other side, it's John Martin playing Dredge. We, we like some of the sideboard cards, Eduardo, the mm -hmm. rest in pieces specifically for Vidianto, but game one, does he have the tools to, uh, to keep off the horde of creatures that John can put out. Now, this is modern dredge here, right? We're talking about prize amalgams, and you see blood gas, that kind of thing. It's not overwhelmingly powerful, but it is relentless, right? and it is hard to, uh, to deal with over and over again. Right, but like this game is going to come down more to John Martin's draw than uh, Vidianto's. Vidianto has a few important cards. The Tension Sphere is capable of taking care of multiple amalgams, and he can... Uh, both Cryptic to buy a turn or uh, use Supreme Verdict. So these cards do all buy a turn. Okay. It's just that Vidianto eventually will run out of them. Um, and it just depends if John can put enough pressure to make that Rally the Peasants lethal, uh, which he has in his graveyard. It's a one-off, but it allows him to basically give two more power to all of his creatures and um, actually put a fret on uh, Vidianto that some, that some dredge decks or actually most right now, if you play online, are just not running right now. So most lists aren't running Rally the Peasants, this way to deal this extra damage. Mm -hmm. And there's also the Conflagrate. So Vidianto has to be careful not to go too low on life because then once Vidianto's below 10, the Blood Ghasts have haste, uh, the Conflagrates start being a real problem, mm -hmm. and there could be a lot of damage coming. The fact that John Martin has two Narcomibas in hand, though... Pretty no, nasty. <laughs> yeah, that, it's not just that there's two dead cards in hand, it's also that you can't get them from your deck. There's, it's much less likely. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Cryptic Command. And it looks like that was going to counter a flashback Faithless Looting. Mm. So he's going to keep that train from rolling, but he still does get back the prize amalgam on end step and pass it to turn back to Vidi. So, yeah, yeah that, that, was, that was important to counter. Um, basically, if it had resolved and John Martin had gotten a prize amalgam, and you can see that the order in which he did it, right? He got the blood gas first and then the prize amalgam. His plan was, I'm going to get the prize amalgam, this one now, so it's triggered. Uh, if I hit another one from my graveyard, my amalgam goes on to, into play at end step. And then, basically, Vidianto can't Supreme Verdict away the Amalgams. If I hit any other Amalgams, I might dredge. I see. So that was a way for John Martin to have pressure, even through a Supreme Verdict. Uh, by basically going end of turn, prize Amalgam, and then there's delayed triggers that would happen at the end of Vidianto's turn. Tough spot here for Vidi. He's going to cast, well, Spreading Seas, incremental advantage for him, slowly sort of working in his direction. But right now, he's facing seven power. And he's at 13 life here. He's going to need answers, and he's going to need them quickly. Two-turn yeah. clock, bang, bang, he could just be dead. Definitely. If Vidianto takes the hit, which is likely with free lands, um, then basically he gets to, yeah, he, under t 10 is the, the magical life toll that John wants to put Vidianto at, because then these blood gas have haste, and that allows John to do some really nasty things with those fetch lands and like basically go ahead. Uh -oh. Yeah, he did hit a blood gas off of that dredge of the dark blast there, though it will not have haste right now, even if he cracks a wooded foothill. So he's just going to go ahead and attack for seven. But we're going to see Path to Exile. Hmm. I'll actually get it back. But uh, there goes the uh, prized amalgam. No more lands. Uh, let's see. There, there's a basic mountain in the graveyard. So and one on the battlefield. Right. So Dredge usually runs two. So okay. if you're ever interested when you're playing Field of Ruin or Path to Exile against a Dredge deck, look for the two mountains between graveyard and play. If you see them, 
you're good to go. It's going to be like better than strip mine or not give them a land, yeah. which can be important if you're trying to avoid a landfall trigger with Bloodgast. Yeah, which he did avoid there. Um, John just went ahead and uh, shuffled but didn't find anything. <laughs> and we have hit the stage of the game <laughs> where <laughs> Narcomib is being hard cast off of Stomping Ground and Mountain thanks to Spreading Seas. We did it. <laughs> Vidianto kindly fixing John Martin's mana so that he can cast the Narcomoeba. If he dies to Narcomoeba, how miserable for Vidianto with Shia. Well, <laughs> you may as well go for it now. Yeah. He's going to go ahead and take out the uh, Copper Line Gorge with a second copy. Hard gas Necro. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, that is, that is really funny. So, by the way, the, the, the reason that Jonathan got the Dark Blast, I mean, he could have gotten the Darkmoor Salvage, which would have been one less card but a landfall trigger, but the best reason to get the Dark Blast here is you can kill your own Bladgast in, in response to a Path to Exile. Oh, sure. Or you mentioned the uh, Detention Sphere. Yes, that's also... Well, it doesn't stop Amalgam, but it definitely stops it on, on Bloodgast. so that's really exactly. powerful. Exactly, yeah. Smart. So he's actually got a kind of a weird insurance policy lined up yeah. for that type of card. Keep his cards from getting exiled. Yeah. And as you note, noted before... He's at nine, so now that Bloodcast has haste, two, four, six, seven. Vidi says, okay, I guess I go to two. Are we going to see another copy of Narcomoeba hardcast here? <laughs> um, I don't think there's a need for more pressure. but He doesn't not really need it, does no, he? No. But Jonathan's pretty far ahead here. Uh, I would keep it. I would, say, yeah, I would keep it in hand. Um, yeah. Ba basically, here, he can Dark Blast in response to Detention Sphere, or he could sack his land if uh, Vidianto decides to go for a uh, Supreme Verdict and get back his Blood Gas and deal that pressure. Plus, um, I believe John has answer, like access to Conflagrate. So, basically, he's attacking Vidianto on a ton of... Uh, areas right yeah, like the conflagrate yep. yeah the the conflagrate stack the the board um he can attack on ivor angle i think john john martin's probably going to lock this one up yeah Vidianto only has two lands uh and for him to come back he's going to need like something like running cryptics plus that counter spell for the conflagrate and it's it's probably going to be just way too much uh john doesn't john's drawing a card well there's no dredge so he's out of dredges <laughs> uh -huh. it's all good we can just kill him with this narcomiva yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah he you're right he, he does though have all of his angles covered here combat would get the job done there is a conflagrate in the graveyard as well and that is going to do it game number one going to the other side of the table john martin Says here, thanks for the <laughs> thanks <laughs> for spreading the spreading seas. Seas. And Archimeda says thank you as well. And that's going to put us back down on Legacy. Jeremy Fry losing game one to Jonathan Angeleska, who looked like he was on the ropes. And that lasted about one turn before Emrakul showed up and wiped the board, giving game one to Jonathan Angeleska. So let's see if Jeremy Fry can come back a bit here. Now, not a lot going on on Jonathan's side of the board, but that's what we expect to see. Sure. Uh, but there is a Snapcaster Mage, which look at, looks like it just flashed back a Ponder there for Jeremy Fry as he tries to get something going. Right. And the point here is that Jeremy has a lot of... If you're worried that he's tapping out, uh, if you're more used to Modern rather than Legacy, that's okay. He has Dazes and Force of Will. So tapping out is not a problem. He can still counter uh, most of what Jonathan does with his counter magic if you know it is relevant, if uh, yeah. Jonathan can't pay for it. Um, you rarely see people fight over Brainstorms. Right. Um, and that's not happening here. So. No. I think with the conditional counter spells, it's still hard. Um, I mean, here you don't really want to daze it and force the willing it is pretty... It's probably too much. Mm -hmm. um, the, the more, the more uh, subtle aspect that you might miss out on if you're not as used to Legacy is that Jonathan fetched that basic island. Basically... Apologies for that. That was not an intentional pen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> trying to avoid this Wasteland. Oh, avoided Wasteland. And also, I mean, is there a chance that Jonathan has his uh, Blood Moons in? Yes, so the most important card by far for Jonathan here, mm -hmm. post-board, is those Blood Moons. If a Blood Moon hits play, Jeremy is done. That, that match is ended. If Jonathan in Game 2 or a potential Game 3 ever goes Blood Moon and Jeremy's like, okay, well, he might as well shake his head. GG, right. And getting Islands gives him access to blue mana even if he does end up resolving a Blood Moon. And let's see what he got. This is turn 3. He may be able to do it here. Yeah. His hand looks very blue, though. It looks oh, yeah, like it I has... I see a lot of forces down there, a couple yeah. of them minimum. He's just going to go for show and tell. Just run that out there and say, okay, well, what do you have as far as counter magic goes? Because if you don't have anything, I could 
Wow, it looks like it's resolved. <laughs> and there's Emrakul again and a Gurmog Angler on the other side. All right, we have a one-turn window, but we saw two Force of Wills in hand for Jonathan. I don't see how Jeremy's going to get out of this. There is one way. One way is that one-off Diabolic Edicts. Oh. <laughs> However, Jonathan does, and that's, it doesn't that's it. do it. So Jonathan Angelescu is the only one to win a match so far. He's also the only one to even win a game on his side of the battlefield. Logan Nettles has dropped game one to William Ho, and we saw... Uh, Vidyanta Wajaya have a really tough time with that dredge deck in modern against John Martin, but we're going to sideboard games now, Eduardo, where things can look up strongly for both of those players. Yep. So, so yeah. The gates for Logan, get some rest in pieces in there for Vidyanto, and it could tell a much different story, couldn't it? Yeah, the uh, yeah, the rest the free of rest in peace in uh, Vidyanto's list really are going to help a lot to take over. Even the Elspeth, something as simple as Elspeth, only the Narcobibas really have evasion, as well as a hard cast Stinkweedum, which is where we might, we might see. Um, mm -hmm. And like the tokens like will stop a lot of the pressure from John Martin. Rune Halo is also extremely strong in this matchup. Um, I, I really like Vidianto's position post-board just because of how strong Rest in Peace is. Uh, what John Martin's gonna going to try to do to avoid that, he's going to board in too fast. He's just good in the matchup anyways and counters rest in peace. Nature's Claim, a good way to deal with one of these uh, pr troublesome enchantments and rest in peace and rune halo. Collective Brutality just as a discard. It doesn't get rest in peace. That's the kind of unfortunate part. Uh. Um, so yeah, he, might, he may actually decide not to bring in the Brutalities and bring in the Decays because they are so good against the enchantment suite of Vidianto. This blue-white control deck playing a lot of enchantments. Um, much more than we're, we're used to. I actually, I've seen very modified versions of that deck play Ghostly Prison and Sphere of Safety. Really? Yes. Wow, that was, that's very modified. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> it's a modern kidding. take on the archetype, but yeah. <laughs> it, it basically, yeah, that deck uses like cards like Spreading Seas and uh, Detention Sphere and uses the, the and prison, and, uh, Ghostly Prison to essentially make Sphere of Safety, safety goes from you pay Axe per creature to you can't attack. You just can't attack ever. Yeah, yeah. But no, here we're seeing the more traditional blue-white list that tries to mana deny with spreading seas and field of ruin. It, it can happen against Dredge, but because of Dredge's speed, as well as the fact that uh, they have life from the loam, it is possible. It's just a lot harder, and they can operate off fewer lands. They, they ideally want three, but two is possible. So Vidianto's plan is probably not going to be focused on this mana denial, except for maybe game two since he's on the play. It's going to be focused on get this rest in peace. So the fact that Spreading Seas cantrips does help him in that sense, actually. Sure. Yeah, you know, that is the one thing about the, uh, the Dredge deck in Modern, right? Is that when, when I think of Dredge, right, I think of the more busted, you know, legacy and or vintage versions that can do stuff where you're going, that is absurd. Like, it didn't look that bad a minute ago, and now my <laughs> whole graveyard is full, and I've got 20 things, and maybe even they're attacking you. This deck is a much more plotting version, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's not putting out any broken cards, right? It was vanilla two ones, maybe with haste, right? <laughs> and some three threes that enter the battlefield tap. Like, these were not exciting plays, but it can just sort of put that wave again. You know, it feels more like a zombie-style strategy where it's just like, we're coming back again next turn. But uh, if you have a permanent way to exile those, yeah. they don't really have a whole lot going on. You, you will have the time to do so. Yeah, that's a really good point. You're not, you don't have Bridge from Below. You don't have Cabal Therapy. You don't have yeah. the Ignorance. These See, that's what I think of when I think of Dredge. Bazaar of Baghdad, anybody? Oh, come on, no. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> no? No Bazaar of Baghdad? Okay. Bazaar of Baghdad is also like uh, the answer to what is the most extreme mulliganing strategy in Magic the Gathering. Truth. <laughs> that's true. Until I get one of those. <laughs> yeah. the car, if, if the card Bazaar of Baghdad is involved in a match of Magic, the, the percentage chance of having a mulligan either side increases dramatically. <laughs> it's true, you're right, because everybody <laughs> goes for their sideboard cards or goes Ley line for of the, the void, for yeah. itself. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. But yeah, um, John Martin uh, probably disadvantaged in this game, but in game two, it is possible to beat, re in game three, sorry if we get there, it might be possible to beat the rest in peace. An incredibly fast start with the right Faithless looting into Cathartic Reunion or something of that sort might allow John, John Martin to really break through. Okay. Uh, by almost kind of like that card, Breakthrough. Um, <laughs> yeah. By, uh, speaking of dredge cards. Speaking of dredge cards, yeah. By dredging a ton, getting like say two or three amalgams in play plus maybe a Bloodgast or two. Um, 
And then from there, just going nuts. And like, then Vidianto could look at the rest of these and go like, yeah, but there's 10 power on the board. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the important thing here is, if you want to see uh, John Martin win this, if you're a fan and want him to win, the important thing is that Vidianto mulligans low and has an awkward hand because he's aggressively going towards rest in peace. If Vidianto keeps his hand, there's a high chance that he's going to, to win the game since he's at seven, he's most likely going to look for hands that interact very favorably with Dredge. We got the JVL cam in effect here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I don't think he knows that camera's on. Yeah. Oh, we can see it now. Yeah. It looks like, yeah. It looks like VD may have kept, and John is examining the opening seven. Hi, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got to love that guy. <laughs> oh, okay. So it seems like uh, John Martin... Uh, <laughs> no, Andy. All right, here we go. Let's get in. Hey, he's going for a mulligan. Yeah, the direct check mulligans really well, though. You can yep. mulligan to four and win the game. That's not a problem. Okay. I've d I think we've done it, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> wow, that's impressive. That is not easy to do. Here, here are the cards you care about. Land, Faithless Looting, and some other nonsense that looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Yeah. Fa Faithless Looting, I remember when it was printed, man. I love that card. It was just like, I could not stop raving to my teammates about how good that card was, but they were like, well, look, we're in standard. It's probably not going to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't admit defeat. Eventually, I did. But <laughs> finally, we're seeing the format <laughs> where Faithless Looting is expressed as it should be. Oh, that's great. Wait, is VD mulliganing too now? This is interesting. That since, was weird. Yeah, since John Mulligan first... Unless, yeah, and he's not on the play most likely. So, um, yeah, this is weird. That I don't know strange. what happened here. I assume we'll we'll get we could get some update here. I guess we could ask. Yeah, let me let me see if I can find any. Yeah, it, it, because like for for those wondering like why why I'm kind of curious what's going on here is Vidianto lost the uh, game one, and usually. Um, who in modern especially, you want to be on the play. Deciding to be on a draw is an extremely rare action reserved to a very uh, small subsection of matchups. Mm -hmm. uh, on average, it is... If you say play in modern, you're usually just right. Yeah. Point blank. So um, it was a bit strange to see John Martin mulligan first or take the, act the, the physical action of mulliganing uh, since normally Vidianto being on the play would have to say so first if he decided to. Um... But yeah, um, for sure, uh, Mar John Martin mulliganing is definitely less bad for him than for Vidianto. Vidianto mulliganing and losing a card is a higher cost. Th and the main reason for that is Vidianto needs four or five up to sometimes six lands to operate, while John Martin can operate off one or two. And that difference in lands is the difference in like the cards, right? Like John can go like, I don't really need these lands. Uh, so he can be uh, with less cards and still be efficient, while Vidianto, and if he doesn't hit four mana, is not going to have access to some of his most powerful spells, like the Cryptic Commands, uh, Supreme Verdict, which he probably will have to keep. Yeah, it is a mana-intensive deck. So this should be on Vidi here. He's deciding if he wants to keep his six. And they've kept. All right. All right, so we're going to get a game two from these two players. Shortly. I, I don't know, like, trying top, I usually consider, like, a lack of value, even though it's obviously better. <laughs> <laughs> really? You're that guy? <laughs> like, I could have got more out of this? <laughs> of course. You always want value. Uh, that's great. That is true. I, I do always Like want the value. Serum Visions right here. Yes, you're right. And he got the card that he put on top and then scribed two to the bottom. Land. Faithless Looting? There we go. That's kind of all it can be there. So there we go. That's what the Dredge deck wants. It wants turn one Faithless Looting. That's, the, like, the best card in the deck. Uh, having, uh, you know, I played the, the deck on stream uh, with mm -hmm. uh, Zen Takahashi, who's, like, uh, played Dredge at high, like, and done very well with it at various online events. Right. And, you know, he was, uh, we were kind of discussing the deck as we were going, and he was like, you can kind of keep any hand with land faithless looting, mm -hmm. mostly. It's that important. Yeah, it's that important. It's that powerful. And, like, a lot of the other hands are mulliganable. Uh, you can be mulligan because it doesn't contain faithless looting. 
So but let's see what he gets rid of. He gets rid of a Bloodgast and a Golgari Thug, it looks like. So he's got a Dredger yeah. going, and yeah. a land can bring back a Bloodgast. So I can see why it's good now. Yeah. <laughs> the, I, I love that you said get rid of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in other words, put them exactly where he wants them to be. They, they're, they're both in comeback mode. Exactly. And look at that. He even hit a Narc Amoeba off of the Dredge. Yeah. And now there's a Conflagrate in the yard, too, a land and, yeah. a, and a Neonate. But still. It, yeah. It, it's kind of interesting because John Martin did have that Amalgam in hand. So it's interesting that he decided not to go, say, discard Amalgam Bloodgast. And Raver wanted that Dredger in the graveyard right now. Mm -hmm. So the, the, what Martin did have... Uh, this decision to go, well, I just want, I, I, I can either just dredge or I can just focus on getting five power on the board. And he decided, like, okay, I want to dredge. Okay, well, he's going to get three power yeah. thanks to hitting the Narc Amoeba. For sure. But, yeah, even though he got a Narc Amoeba, this wasn't, like, what uh, John Martin was looking for. He was really looking for another dredger. That was the key. So now Vidianto, right, but Vidianto knows this. this it's relatively clear. So he's going to hard try to cap. Stop this faithful swing, but like missing that land drop. Wow. No yeah, white source missing the land drop. Super brutal here for Vidianto. I wonder if he has the. Uh, I wonder if he has his key sideboard cards in hand, but just doesn't have the mana to cast them. You know, I, I saw a glimpse like of those uh, rest in peace towers. Okay. And I think that if you keep, I, like, if you keep Serum Visions, Blue Source, Rest in Peace, that's a totally, totally fair keep at six. Uh huh. But you can see the power, right, of the, of, of like how these decks work like dredge basically they rely on their opponents going well i need this hate piece so again as i, as I was saying earlier right the, the opponent the opposing hands are going to be worse as a result because you need to like look for these rest in peace etc but like your hand may just not be good he's just going to discard his hand to conflagrate here yeah, so basically... No, that's the one way to get a dredger in the yard. Yeah, that's an excellent way to get a dredger in the yard. He goes for Conflagrate, uh, discarding four. The discard is actually part of the cost of the card. Okay. So in this instance, even if Vidianto decides to counter the Conflagrate for four, which he may decide to do, um, well... The uh, damage is done, huh? The discard happened, right? Yeah, that, not, um, not the literal damage, but the... <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, there's that uh, prize amalgam. I, don't, I can't see quite the other card, but it looks like also a blood gas. So most likely John Martin kept it is. a land and deals four here. Play might decide... Yes, this is interesting. I think that here John Martin should play a fetch land um, and look to get a blood gas. So, so John Martin can decide, I want to play around Rest in Peace and get his cards back because Vidianto doesn't have white for Supreme Verdict. Right, he needs double white for it. Right. So getting back the blood gas and the prize amalgam seems pretty strong here. Yeah, so, so the, and this would be the standard play, right? Right. But like the other option, if Vidianto didn't have Rest in Peace and had white mana, would have been to go uh, second main phase, blood gas, and then Rest in Peace. Planes off the top, by the way. Yeah, it, it might be too, Is it too, late? too late. Yeah, I was going to say, are we in business here? Like, could he go, uh, like, planes, rest in peace, planes off the top, wipe your board? Yes, that is that's what, what he, we're looking at here. That's what we're looking at. Um, okay. There are some uh, other ways to get there. Uh, definitely the rest in peace coming down is super important. Uh, let's see, this is 7, 8 damage, and Vidianto is at 14. So it might be that Vidianto has to deal with the board first. That is not a good position to be in, though. Um, it really depends on the texture of his hand. If Vidianto has a removal spell for that prize amalgam, this might be the time to fire it off. Uh, Something like a Celestial Purge or some of the cards we saw on his sideboard? Yeah, this, might, yeah th this might be the time. Because, but the problem is, John Martin has a Faithless Looting and a Dredger. So he, Vidianto has to choose, because if he c Celestial Purges or paths the Amalgam this turn, the clock goes from an apparent two turns to three turns, mm -hmm. assuming nothing else happens. Um, and later he can't do that, because John Martin will deal eight, Vidianto goes to five, and basically you could remove the Amalgam, that's still five damage. Yep. So Vidianto has to choose, okay, what? basically he has to calculate his odds. He has to calculate what are my odds of Depending what's in his hand, what are my odds of drawing a land uh, or the relevant card? So here he decides to go for the rest in peace, shut down any additional pressure uh, from John Martin. And just pray to rip a white mana source? If he has Supreme Verdict. Right. <laughs> I mean... He has to have a plan of some sort. It probably involves drawing a land next turn, like it could be Cryptic Command. Yeah. 
I, I saw a, a lot of blue cards and a path to exile. So the other side of the plan could be to play Snapcaster Path. Not flashing it back, just going path your amalgam, uh, block. block your blood gas, go to two, and then hopefully draw something. Wow. Because once John Martin's board is gone, that gives him a shot to come back. Here's that gives a Vidyanto huge a great draw shot. step for Vidyanto Ajaya. Probably needs to find some white mana here. He needs to deal with the board now. He has the rest in peace. He shut down the graveyard options, but he needs to kill these creatures. And in only five, he can take out both blood gas and go to one. Yeah, th this seems, oh, yeah, boy. It's tough. <laughs> but this seems like a good line, um, depending on what else is in Vidianto's hand. Um, I mean... Being at five life, this, this, his hand is kind of forced. He has to get rid of these blood gas. Yeah, he's going to be at one now. Yeah, Cryptic Command will also be super powerful here uh, since none of the cards are recastable. So he can go tap, bounce the Amalgam, and that kind of works. Yeah, the, the problem, of course, now is that he's going to take four damage, go to one, and a lot of his land drops are shut off at that point. You know, his fetch lands are dead. The, well, thankfully, this is why uh, Vidianto's playing blue-white. You don't take too much damage from a land. So there's only four yeah. flooded strands. Okay, so that doesn't. So those are not outs, but that's actually not as bad as it could be. Right. The, the main issue, though, is blue-white-blue. Blue. There's no dual lands, so Cryptic Command needs exactly an island or, or a Mystic Glacial Gate. Fortress. Yeah, or Mystic Gates. Hallowed Fountain uh, comes into play oh. tap. Rune oh, Halo, Rune the Uncastle. Rune Halo, he can't cast it. I, I have seen Path to Exile. He needs something but on Nark top. But Amoeba has flying. <laughs> so that, that line that you mentioned, by the way, could work. Snapcaster Mage, Chump Lock, Path to Exile, your Nark Amoeba. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you have to do. Exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. And then Cold Rip into another Path or uh, a Celestial Purge or something along those lines. All right, Path to Exile. But what does he have for double blue that can kill the lethal Nark Amoeba? Um, I, I can't think of a card off the top of my head. Is he just going through the motions here? It, it looks like it. I don't think there's a single card in his deck. Yeah, yes, that's he it. was just going through the motions. So John Martin evens things up for his team. Uh, the cryptic. <laughs> oh, so frustrating for Vidyanto Ajaya. Missed that one land drop. And a good draw from John Martin. Uh, getting off to a quick start on turn one with Faithless Looting. Leads him to victory. And that means... The deciders in standard. We've got William Ho, <laughs> Logan Nettles is on zero game win so far. William Ho is on one. And he's got Chandra Torch of Defiance, which is apparently targeting whatever that Vizier of Many Faces is. And now he has Chandra on an empty board. Yeah, and uh, they both have they, they both had a card. So now this is really well, this is what it happens in these grind fests sometimes. It comes to the top of the deck. But the Chandra, as you say, in play is very important. Um, when it comes to the top of the deck, if one of you gets to draw two cards a turn, that's really powerful. Yeah, and it, it happens very quickly, right? Yeah. You pass a turn, they get their two cards, you think, okay, I'm still in this. You draw a land, you pass a turn, and it's like, this is over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're just up too many cards on you so quickly. Especially if one of the two cards in hand for Logan Nettles is in a tune with Ether. The other one better be, you know, yeah. Glory Bringer or something really powerful. Yeah. He's got the uh, Vizier of Many Faces in the graveyard. Nothing on board that it can copy. It's just stranded. Right. But actually, that Vizier of Many Faces makes it interesting because uh, William Ho may not be able to cast anything off his Chandra, say a Glory Bringer. Uh, because of the way the life totals are right now, 8 to 20, getting a Glory Bringer out of Chandra. William Ho might not be able to cast it just because of the threat of that Vizier many faces. He's passed the turn back to William. This tournament is William's to win for well, his team. He just needs to finish off Logan Nettles and complete the 2-0, and they will be our champions here. And Logan Nettles, by the way, that's Jabberwocky on Magic Online for those of you that play, and he is a very well-known and very well-respected player. Mm. Uh, especially on Magic Online. He's going to be playing in the Magic Online Championship. Like, this guy's a big deal I wish and I a could, very yeah. good player. I wish I could qualify to that tournament one oh, day. Oh, it's such a sick tournament, too. It's insane. But, yeah, here you can kind of see, like, the Chandra. The Chandra got into another two-for-one, the Rogue Refiner. Yep. The Sermon of the Conduit doesn't look impressive, but that two energy makes the a for hubs work. It means that any, uh, let's say, Virtuoso that gets top-decked or Hydra can protect itself 
uh, or it can make more fopters. And this is, yeah, oh my god. <laughs> oh, another one of these attune with ethers for poor Logan Nettles. That is not what he wants to see here. Now, he does now have a target, though, right? Right. For his uh, vizier? Right. He could, he could make a rogue refiner and see if what he hits? Yeah, but this is kind of, sem the, the thing is, right, Logan is under the pressure, enough pressure that he has to kind of do this. Yeah. Uh, unless he drew another card that he can cast this turn. Uh, simply because if he declines to get anything, William Ho's like, okay, I'll just attack for five and then two you with this Chandra. And yeah, then you take seven a turn and you're done. So Logan Nettles is just forced to kind of get this Vizier. You want a more interesting target, but you just can't because William Ho has more than enough pressure on the board as stands. Ooh, he drew the card that I think they said was his best card of the weekend, which was Commit to Memory, I believe. Oh, that'd be oh, Commit Memory here would be incredible. I think that's what he drew. He he would get to get rid of the Chandra. He's at tons of life, so he can still take this hit. Oh, and we might have a game here. It, and he also has more mana, so uh, hmm. I, I really hope that's Commit Memory. I really, I want to see. Yeah. I I, I want to see that time reversal. Or, you know, Time Twister. It's closer to Time Reversal, because Time Reversal is the same card, but costs more mana. Hey, we've seen it on camera. It is insane. Wow, look at that. Rogue Refiner, though, for William Ho. He is pulling far ahead of Logan Nettles, even if it is a commit to memory. Yeah, the, the look main... Look at the board. Yeah, the, the main issue is for Logan here is, like, he's falling way too far behind on the board. Right. And the commit memory, even with that much mana... Um, you know, your opponent still gets first crack, right? They get to cast their spells first. So usually that's why you don't see memory cast much, even though players have the option. They only do it when they're kind of in desperate mode. However, if you drew commit memory, this, this is getting to desperate mode. Um, the main issue, though, is that Logan can't cast commit and memory in the same turn without drawing, like, say, another land. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> it's... I mean, he can commit, and then he can memory, but the, the speed... Plus the pressure that William Ho is putting between that Chandra and the Rogue Refiners and the Servant is it's going to be hard for Logan to come back. Um, I'm trying to see like a Rivers Rebuke or something like that might give him the time he needs. Okay, he's gonna uh, he's being attacked now by Rogue Refiner. William Ho's going to send it in. Yeah, he's got an abundance of resources and feels like Chandra's pretty well protected. So may as well start getting at that life total. Yeah, indeed. But like you can see like that uh, William Hope doesn't want his Chandra to, to get off. That's why he decided not to attack with the Servant of Conduit here. That's right. Um, you know, you can deal you, William Ho has more than enough pressure to finish this game. He doesn't he he doesn't need to do much. He needs Logan to Logan needs to do something here. Um, William Ho is a little weak now to a top deck glory bringer though. Uh, and yeah, Lo Logan decides to trade because um, you might as well prevent the damage here. Um, it's not like your rogue refiner is going to get much more value. So you might as well trade here. Uh, it, by the way, there was a misstep there from William Ho. I, I think he had actually played an additional land this turn, though it looks like he's picked it up. There was That's a swamp it. that he had played. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, he had access to six, ma I believe, six lands last turn. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah okay. So, so I guess he just picked it up. But, Okay. Anyway, back to Logan Nettles. Let's see if that was commit to memory, and let's see what he can do to try to find his way out of this mess, because if he can't, William Ho's going to win his match and the round, and in fact, the entire tournament. We'll go to William Ho, John Martin, and Jeremy Fry. In, a, in a really an incredible performance. I mean, this is a field full of great teams. Yeah. Great and formats, three too. relative unknowns, right, at least compared to some of the players that we've had in the feature match area over the course of the weekend, taking this thing down is a super impressive feat. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah, uh, let's, yeah, like, and I mean, most people may not know uh, Logan Nels, Vidianto, uh, Wajaya, and Jonathan Angolescu, but I can... It, it's not because we you don't know them that they're not insane. <laughs> yeah, and and if you watch a lot of GPS, you will know these. I mean, you know these guys do pop up. I mean, Logan doesn't travel a ton. Vidianto used to travel all the time, only every once in a while. Jonathan, he's from Europe, so we don't always get him on camera. But yeah, you were right. It was commit memory. Okay, well, how about we get rid of Chandra? Oh, and he did draw a land for the turn, but it was a tap land. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. <laughs> that's a Beating. Man, Logan cannot buy a bucket here, but he has stemmed the bleeding a little, and you mentioned he's at 18 life, so he does have something to play with. It's not like he's going to die this turn. Yeah, it, it, he's probably fine as long as William doesn't put a ton of pressure down this turn. 
Although that doesn't look like not a ton of pressure. That looks like exactly a ton of pressure. It has to be Ooh. Vraska Relic Seeker. Oh, that's harsh. That right there is extraordinarily harsh. William Ho is a mean, mean man. Oh, he has something else. What else is it? Oh, another Rogue Refiner, too. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is... But you can kind of see, like, why these black versions of the energy decks are ahead. Like, you get to play these walkers that are just unreal. Like, the fact that Raska here is going to, like, make a menace pirate is, like... So, like, Logan is like, okay, I guess I could time twister, but... But he's so <laughs> far behind now. Yeah. And, of course, Vraska sitting at a cool eight loyalty as well. You know, there's no glory bringer that's going to come down and kill a Vraska. And this one is starting to look very bad for Logan Nettles and company and very good for William Ho. Okay. Um, let's construct a world where Logan wins this game. Since uh, I think William Ho, how he can win this game... Well, just keep playing with let, the let cards just, he has on Let's board. just have the cards we have. That's all good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Logan uh, is probably going to have to... He has two lands. So his only action is to memory, really, this turn. He's just considering which land to play, which lands to keep untapped. Um, but here... Oh, boy. The card he really wants is going to be River's Rebuke. Yes. Because that's the only card that will allow him to catch up the nonsense board that William Ho will have in play. Without Especially given that William's going to have drawn a fresh seven with a ton of mana available and a big board as well, right? Yeah. Um, now, William won't ha like, probably won't have boarded in the negates. Uh, he might board in one or two. Um, obviously, if William boards in a negate and draws it, like, it's basically over because the board is so is pretty much unreal in uh, his favor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you can kind of see like, the difference here is like, well, the desperation. Uh, so yeah, Logan, I believe, played his land for the turn, and uh, yeah, now he's working with five lands. He can't really uh, play another one that he would draw. Mm -hmm. So what? So at five mana, what he, the hand he's hoping to draw is going to be a bunch of removal spells, Rivers Rebuke, and then on top of that, things like Virtuoso Rogue Refiner that allow him to kind of stabilize, have board initiative, and then go on top after okay, that. Okay, now does this also mandate that William Ho draws kind of not a lot of things, like five lands, <laughs> Yeah, you know, that, you know, uh, whatever, uh, a servant of the conduit, like that kind of, like he has to draw poorly as well yeah, in yeah. order for this perfect scenario that we're trying to, <laughs> to, to craft for come together. It is a tall order to say the least. Yeah, William would have to draw like a horrible seven, mm -hmm. like, um, like just a bunch of lands, attunes, yeah. nothing, nothing much, like um, but post board, both decks have a lot, and William has access to some incredibly powerful cards like Scarab God. Uh, you know, another Chandra. The Chandra could come back. <laughs> and look at this. William's like, great. I get seven cards. He only had one card left in his hand and a ton of mana. So let's see if Logan can even begin to start chipping away <laughs> at this huge deficit that he finds himself in. Because if he can't, we've got our champs. Yeah, for sure. I like how, by the way, William Ho showed his hand to his teammates. I, I know you're excited and everything when you're like in these situations, but sometimes it's best not, not to do it too quickly so that your teammate doesn't give away what's in your hand. Yeah, what if his teammate was like, oh, yes! <laughs> I guess that wouldn't matter in this spot, would it? <laughs> oh, I think you could do that, but just to intimidate your opponent. Sure, not, sure. Not Logan, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, Logan's a chill guy. He would, not be, uh, he would not be intimidated, but I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, one card that could have helped, Log like, if you're looking to, you know, build your standard decks, one card that could be interesting in the sideboard of these energy decks is Hour of Devastation for spots like this. Okay, now you mentioned that this is part of the puzzle, cards like Whirler Virtuoso to help him stabilize. Unfortunately, in a Tune with Ether, another one, and that's not going to get him even another Thopter worth of energy, at least not yet. But he'll have 14, and he yeah. will be able to not die next turn. I yeah. guess you, you live with that. Yeah, yeah. The the, the world of virtuoso is like pretty much the card you needed. Like I don't, mm. I can't really construct a world where Logan wins this game where virtuoso wasn't hitting play okay. at some point. So one of many check boxes <laughs> yeah. has been checked. One of the most important aspects of this virtuoso, William Hose at eight. Sure. And four Fopters. Sure. They can get there because Logan can take one more hit with everything. Yes. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go to five. Right. Um, he can't oh, take more. So now the question for William is like, how can I lock this game away? Yeah, looks he, like he's going to keep just keeping his board going with a pirate here. 
Yeah, his line might be if he had a ha has drawn a haste creature or a scarab god, his line might be to ultimate Raska to put Logan Nels to one ah. as, as a backup option. He'll rather attack and rather keep the Vraska, but you, you never know what could happen. Um, and then you know the scarab god trigger or glory bringer or something of that sort could. By the could way, do the job done. Although, they're, all, they're all evened up. Yeah. Actually, I apologize. I don't think uh, William Ho is playing Glorybringer, so because he's on the four color energy list. Sure. But the Scarab, Scarab God, God or Chandra could also yeah. do the job. Yeah. Also, wasn't Logan supposed to be at fourteen energy? I felt like he was. No, he he had seven, added two for the attune and three for the virtuoso as a shortcut. He just did it at once. Yeah. Okay. Understood. However, the fourteen in energy of William Ho is a real problem, especially with that virtuoso. Oh yeah, that locks off that line of play, and you can see the door closing on Logan Nettles and his team. Made it all the way to the finals, but this one is very much slipping away as William Ho, John Martin, and Jeremy Fry are on the precipice of winning this Grand Prix. John Martin beat Vidianto uh, with Jaya in the modern match mm. using Dredge. And Jonathan Angolescu actually made pretty short work of Jeremy Fry against the, the Grixis Delver deck of Jeremy. Jonathan was on Sneak and Show and just kind of slapped oh, him his, around. It was fast. That It was great. He basically, both games just got a quick show intel yeah. with Force of Will backup, and the Grixis Delver de deck did not draw enough of its disruption in one first game one piece and in second game zero. So it, it just wasn't there. Um, as for this exact board right now... Yeah, are we talking Rivers, Rebuke, or Bust at this point? Pretty much. Um, that's and even then... yeah. Um, I mean, maybe Logan's found another line based on what he's drawn. Uh, one thing I did not necessarily like here is William should probably have attacked with that Rogue Refiner. Um, it's not like he's blocking anything here. Right. Uh, the Glorybringer would have haste and flying. Uh, the Thopters have flying. So there's not really a reason not to attack with the Rogue Refiner here. Okay. Uh, unless it was just cast and I missed it, which is probably the most likely scenario. Uh, it does yeah, seem yeah. To be so, the so that's why he wouldn't have attacked. Yes, yeah. Of course. So that and the virtuoso <laughs> this turn makes yeah. sense. Uh, he, but like for me, keeping the servant back is interesting. Um, he does have access to a ton of cards, and the fact that he decided to make a pirate with Raska rather than kill the virtuoso, force the action on Logan, plus uh, get that treasure for extra mana. For me, the fact that the servant is back plus these other aspects tells me that it's most likely that William Ho has two two mana interaction spells such as this Hardness Lightning we're seeing now. Okay. He wants four mana available rather than three and uh, was willing to give up two damage for that. So here we go. Harness Lightning targeting Whirler Virtuoso. Right. So how, the, 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 the golden question, how many Fopters? Because if Logan has the River's Rebuke, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, because you basically turn the Hardness Lightning into destroy 12 energy. Sure. <laughs> Uh, plus get to bash in for a bunch. Um, now, William has negate in hand. William has negate. He has negate in his hand. Then I put Logan's chances at being pretty low, uh, since William can just make tokens and most likely uh, just negate a river's review if right, it came along. Right, protect them. Yeah. yeah. Unless, of course, Logan hasn't negate himself. Sure. That would be great. That would be absurd. That so he does make a bunch of thopters and then lets the um, Harness Lightning resolve. So you see the Whirler Virtuoso hits the graveyard, but still four mana available for William Ho. And what does Logan have? Because we, we've been thinking River's Rebuke since before he cast Memory. And uh, it just seems to be a key piece of the puzzle regardless, as he is so far behind on board and is, in fact, on, behind on life total now as well. Is, is this it? Rebuke? He does go. have River's Rebuke. You said he had Negate. He does Negate? Does he have one to Negate back? Come on, have the Negate, please. We, a Game free would be... Oh, he Supreme has will? Supreme Will, and there is not enough mana over there. Imagine a world where that Vraska had killed the Virtuoso. Yes. With a treasure for this Supreme Will. <gasps> Does William Ho have another negate in his hand? Uh, it doesn't appear so. Wow. So if William Ho had used the Vraska to kill the Virtuoso off and force the action, he would have had that treasure and been able to pay the free for that Supreme Will. But it's wow. The River's <laughs> Rebuke is resolving, and there goes his board. And Logan is attacking William Ho down to two. Down to two here for Logan Nettles trying to make a massive comeback. Wow, that comeback. Wow. Unbelievable. That hardness lightning to make sure the energy is gone and the virtuoso and the virtuoso is also gone. So he, so it's harder for William Ho to rebuild. That whole sequence of rivers of you with the Supreme Will. The fact that William Ho did not use the Vraska to destroy the Virtuoso, taking two more damage, not having that treasure to play for Supreme Will. 
that he knows Logan has two of and is most likely going to board in. This is unbelievable. Now, can William Ho restabilize this board? This one looked like it was in the books. And now, all of a sudden, Logan has William Ho down to two, and he's got five creatures on the battlefield. I, I mean, that, that was just impressive. I, I mean, Unbelievable stuff from Logan Nettles and his team there. Yeah, I was extraordinarily impressed. Logan saw the line, and he took the line, and he went all the way. And, uh, I yeah. love it. Remember, this is the culmination of him drawing Commit to Memory. <laughs> <laughs> Casting it over commit, two turns, two right? Turns. Yeah. Rogue Refiner's not going to get the job done. No, it's definitely not. That's where he's starting, though. I, I think the more important, impressive part as well is like William was about 90% to win the game, maybe a bit more. But, and, and this is where, like, I, I know PGO didn't top four, but they, and, and a, re, a key reason that they do well, a key reason, especially Owen does well, is that Owen is a specialist at winning games that are won. Mm. So, Owen, is, if, you ever, if you ever want to learn how to lock a game that you've won, watch Owen Turtlewell played. Mm -hmm. He's a not giving up those 5%, 3% exactly. down the stretch, which it, is what William did here. Yeah, the, the, the fact that, he, you know, he wanted to keep that Vraska, but his board was so great, you know, like, just killing the Virtuoso, having that treasure to play for the Supreme Will. Like, if he had planned out, like, if he had really fought with the Negate, if my opponent has the Supreme Will as backup, because, you know, he drew a ton of cards, yeah, then William would have been the winner of this game. But, I, I mean, I don't necessarily fault him. These are long tournaments. These are really hard games. Standard is extraordinarily grindy. Uh, it's just that that decision did not pan out. So here... Uh, Man, is he dead? No, no. Most likely he... Virtuoso? No, no, no. So he decided here to go for the line that saves him, play a bunch of energy, and the Virtuoso. Okay, but this lets him make three Thopters. He would still go to one. Basically, if Logan Nettles has a singular removal spell for a Thopter, <laughs> he can that's win. it. And we get to a game free. Unbelievable. Let's see what happens here. Does Logan Nettles have the win here, or are we going to continue this incredible game of standard to decide this Grand Prix. Oh, he's going <laughs> to cycle. He's going to cycle. Oh, man. This is great. Let's see if he finds a removal spell. He's slow, drawing it really slow. Yeah, I don't think Logan's the type of person to slow play. Um, so, yeah, probably he did need to cycle here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, he could just be being thorough. There Let's was a, see what I happens. White border. Wow, Logan is drawing a lot of his basic lands. Uh, which he, he can qu he's playing white bordered cards because white bordered basics because they let him uh, fetch quickly. Uh, you know, you just look at your deck, you go for the white uh, the white border card. It's I mean, he's easy. certainly not playing them because they look nice. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be an accurate statement. So sorry for fans of revised out there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but I mean, it's it would be natural that he's basically out of gas here anyway, right? Because he drew seven, but you know, probably three, you know, two to four of those mm -hmm. were lands. He had exactly what he needed. You know, it wouldn't be shocking to see that he's, uh, you know, a little bit out of gas. Right. He's I also at seven and has to remember his own life total here. This game just does not stop. Yeah, but unfortunately for Logan here, more than anything else, uh, he. I'm just double checking. I don't think there's a method for him to deal uh, direct damage. I don't see a Chandra Torch of Defiance in the list. Yeah, that's a card that comes to mind, isn't it? Yeah, and Glorybringer will easily be blocked by a Falter down the line. And uh, this is, and the problem here is that Logan could attack, trade free Falters, as you say, put William Ho down to one, but then he untaps, plays a bunch of energy cards. That m that Virtuos is going to make more Falters. So Yeah, right. And on top of it, uh, you know, William Ho also has lethal lined up here. Like, he's got seven power on the ground. If he could get rid of the Virtuoso, you know, assuming Logan didn't find another uh, one energy here, he could just kill him. Yeah. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I I'm pretty sure if William Ho uh, just untaps, he wins. He's going to get to win if he untaps. Yeah. Remember, his hand is stacked. He went to discard. He discarded uh, Vraska, right? Like, <laughs> he's got a lot going on. Uh he had a, a rather large and well-built-out board returned to his hand, and uh, over the course of two turns, he will be redeploying it. But the question right now is, can Logan Nettles finish him off and complete one of the best comebacks I've ever seen in yeah. the booth, uh, from the booth here? Yeah, I, well, what is we need to... Is away? Yeah, it is, but whatever we need, what we need to remember, though, is that Logan saw the line. He didn't get there. That doesn't mean that it, it was clearly correct. And... 
you shouldn't, you know, if you're playing these games and you find you need to find those lines and maybe you won't win. It's okay. These things can happen. Mm -hmm. But it seems like he has one spell left in hand. I do not know what that spell is. High chance we're going to find out soon, though. He's forcing the trades here. So this could be it. If he has the removal spell, we could see it. I assume he would have just gone for it earlier because the hand is forced here for William Ho. He's going to make three in trade. William Ho's going to fall down to one. He did not have the removal spell. And he just passes the turn back, and this is great news for William Ho, John Martin, and Jeremy Fry. They have to breathe a huge sigh of relief just for the fact that they get another turn here at all. Yeah, and, and getting that turn is very close to getting the game, actually, just because... Which would give them the match and the round. At the tournament. And the trophy. <laughs> 5000 bucks each, etc. That was an expensive untap step. It really <laughs> was. You know, like, wow. Like, yeah, the winners get $5,000 each. Uh, six pro points, I believe. Uh, but everybody in the top four gets an invite to Pro Tour 25th anniversary. They get to play together again. Big stakes. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, winning this Grand Prix. The trophy... Man, I've top four. I'm talking to some Grand Prix, but winning would be incredible. Like seriously, especially team. It's so oh, yeah. bonding and awesome, and you get somebody to celebrate with right away, no matter what. Yeah. All right. Well, now William just has to decide how he wants to redeploy his board, basically. And this is kind of what you were talking about. He has returned to a dominant position in this game, mm. and now he needs to make sure that he plays very tight, yeah. doesn't leave those little openings. For oh, I guess they don't actually can't actually pay for that supreme will. That kind of thing can't yep. happen again. And he needs to finish off Logan. Uh oh, here it is, Vraska Relic Seeker. Now there's a negate. So that was the last spell in hand there for Logan Nettles. He was gonna just go for the win. Yeah, you know. Just so so I I would guess that Logan by the way top deck that negate uh, because for sure he would have played negate over supreme will in that spot because he could dig later. Yes, the digging ability would have been really critical. Right. So for sure, he would have. I would assume that Logan has drawn the negate. I would like this turn. Okay. Um, or or like the turn before. Like he wouldn't have had access to it. it. It would be very surprising to me if Logan decided to play Supreme Will over negate in that spot. It looks like William might be lining up a vizier of many faces. Get himself probably another Hydra, but it also means more Whirler Virtuoso, so he can get another. Flyer. Oh, well, this Chandra is... He also uh, could just kill the Whirler Virtuoso. Yeah, he's going for it. He's going to kill him. He's assuming that Logan's out of gas, which he is, and he's got a lethal attack. And, oh, boy, did they avoid disaster with this one. But this is a lethal tournament-winning attack. Nothing left for Logan Nettles. He's got to extend the hand. William Ho, <laughs> Sean Martin, and Jeremy Fry. Boy, they made it interesting for us, but they are our champions here. Sunday Night Magic in Santa Clara. We've got our champs. Eduardo, my God, I thought I was going to have a heart attack on that game. That, that was a, an awesome game of standard to end on. Wonderful. Seriously, that was incredible. That whole line. Unbelievable. The, the commi <laughs> that commit memory. Well, actually, two turns. Commit and then to memory. Mm -hmm. Get get the Virtuoso. Then, un you know, untap. Get the River's Rebuke with counter backup, which uh, William Ho could have stopped with that Vraska by getting a treasure. Did not. Supreme Will got in there. And then Logan Nettles just needed any removal a glo or a glory bringer. Or, and just it. At the very last second, did not get there. Okay, and that's going to do it for the finals here from GP Santa Clara. Incredible stuff from the feature match area. I tell you what, when you have teams like this, you give yourself triple the chance to have a great match. And we had some really fun ones. We got to see Legacy kind of do its thing. You know, oh, here's some Emrakuls, that kind of <laughs> stuff, which was really sweet. We ended off with something we're a little bit more familiar with, though, and that was Standard and an incredible match to wind things down. Uh, we're going to be getting a winner interview here. I don't actually know who we're going to interview. We're going to get one of the, one of the winners. Uh one? I, they're a team. Do, yeah, <laughs> we, we only get one because we only have one microphone. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick you out, Eduardo. I'm going to mute you here. Thanks so much, Eduardo. Great job this weekend, and let's bring in our winner. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Go ahead and put this on. And then I will unmute you. 
Hi, who are you? Hey, I'm uh, John Martin. You're John Martin. Yeah. John, congratulations. <laughs> Let's get this trophy. Oh, you got it already yeah, in the yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. As as I, could. I almost had a heart attack on that last game. You must have just been sitting out of no your idea. chair. What, um, walk us through that last stretch so against like, Logan there. Uh, Jeremy and Will carried me the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. So, like, I kind of let them just, like, do their whole thing in that match. But I was, like, sitting there, and I was, like, like, like he river re he gets the rivers rebuke. I'm just uh -huh. I'm like oh okay. I was like okay. Well, we got game three. Like we can be on the play. That's good for us. <laughs> and then like they find the line through all this stuff. And like he has a couple land. Like if he hits a removal spell, we lose like on the spot. I'm like okay. And then like when he cycled, the yeah. you're just yeah. <laughs> I can't did imagine. You, did you hear what I said? <laughs> no, like, we can hear you. He, okay, so he he like cycles, and I I'm like he's like slow rolling us, and I'm like how are you a slow rollers right now? Like just <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Uh, he he chuckled. He was like, well, I still got to think if I don't hit it. I'm yeah, like, oh, fair okay, enough. Fair. Yeah. He's very methodical. Player. Yeah, yeah. The funny the part was is that he goes tap two lands, and we're like, <gasps> harness lightning? And then he's like, cycle this one. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> okay, well, it's a rage all. All right, let's play it out. <laughs> yeah, that was a super sick set. Um, and then, you know, we saw... So, so you which which deck were you playing? Uh, I was on Dredge. I was you on were on Water. Dredge, and you ended up facing Blue White. You must have felt pretty good when Vidianto missed that that third you land no drop idea. in the second. You game. have no idea. <laughs> yeah, um, Jeremy and I were, were talking about like possible matchups, mm -hmm. and uh, that Blue White deck it's like it's it's miserable. Like even game one, we're supposed to be favored, but the way his was set up, like it had like Rune Halo in the main board, like yeah, all these things that can slow you down a lot. As a Dredge player, I was just like I whispered to Jeremy like and. Uh, Going into game one, I was like, I don't think I'm going to win this. It's uh -huh. on you guys. And then, like, I 2 0 him magically because, like, <laughs> we're a luck sack and he misses land drops. And <laughs> it was great. Yeah. And that was after Jonathan won his legacy match against yeah. your teammate pretty quickly. It was like, hey, I made an Emrakul. Yeah. What do you got? Nothing. Um, okay. I, I haven't talked to Jeremy about it yet, obviously. We, we got to watch it on camera. Okay. Yeah, but he, you know, he sneak and showed him out, basically. And it was yeah. like, all right, well, there's one match already done. But then you fought back. And then when we came in, we got to ride the roller coaster. Congratulations. Yeah, and boy, you. how cool is this that you guys get to go play at the Pro Tour together, too? Uh, yeah, this is insane. Like, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy's been to a Pro Tour once before. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I've, I've never been neither as Will. So the fact that, like, we like, get to go, all three of us together, and, like, we were making jokes about like this weekend, like, oh, flying from Texas to Santa Clara, let's go win a Grand Prix, and then, like, this. <laughs> and now you have yeah, this, like, this sitting in front of you. How crazy is that? So, so where'd you say you're from, San Antonio? Uh, we're from Austin, Texas. You're from Ooh. Austin. Gotcha. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and uh, are you guys just all friends? You play at the local shop together? Um, What's your yeah, story? Jeremy and I, we, like, met at uh, A&M, and, like, we just started playing magic. At a what? The, uh, Texas A&M. It's a Oh, university. Texas A&M. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Sorry. Yeah. I know Forget that one. that we're not in Texas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so we, we met in college and uh, we just started playing Magic together and then I moved to Austin and then a couple months later he moved and uh, we just like met Will through grinding events and everything and he was like, the team? Yeah, well, he was like, hey, we have like this free place to stay in Santa Clara, I want teammates. And I was like, yeah, sure. So it was like months of events and then like, it finally gets here, and we're like, oh, well, this was a very good decision for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Awesome, a fantastic you. win, and it was really fun to watch. Thanks. Just hang out with me for one minute because yep. it is time for us to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us for Sunday Night Magic here from Santa Clara. We had a very good time bringing you legacy, modern, and standard and we wanted to say thank you so much for Channel Fireball Events for putting on this whole thing, for all the judges and staff to help make these possible. Anybody who's been to one of these knows how important they are to making these events go. They Everything stops yeah, if they do. Seriously. And it's so nice to have them along. And, of course, we wanted to thank you for joining us. We wouldn't do it if it wasn't for you, so thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. So, for J Jacob Van Lunen, for Maria Vartholdi, for Eduardo Sajgalic, and Marshall Seckliff, saying we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, Mom. Yeah.